Hi. So in this video, we're going to talk about using Chisholm Bob to get your multiplication answers. There are many models of multiplication, and I will briefly talk to you about those, uh, or at least 12 of them. And the one that matches up with what you do with finger math is a repeated addition. You let your fingers do the additions that they've learned how to do, and then you count how many times you've done it. So let's get started. So there are many what they call models of multiplication. And while they aren't really necessary for knowing how to do the actual math, they're kind of fun to think about. And they each have a different way of explaining uh, why you would like to know how to do multiplication. I have 12 models here that I found on the website www.naturalmath.com and I'm going to just quickly go over each of them. There's an array which is laying it out in a format of rows and columns. This particular model is really good for showing that uh, numbers 3 times 4 are also the same as 4 times 3. So the commutative property. Because if you have, for instance, um, 4 in 3 rows, you can easily see that you have 3 in 4 rows. So either way, you end up with 12. Another common model is the area model, where you have rectangular shapes, um, and you can have a square rectangle, where the sides are the same, and you multiply them and you get the area, the space inside the rectangle. You have sets, where you think of the multiplication as groups that are then uh, multiplied or added to each other. So that if you had an octopus with eight legs and you had three octopuses, we have uh, 24 legs. You have combinations, very important for probability. And if you had two different shirts and you wanted to combine them with different color bottoms, then you would do two times the number of bottoms that you have, and then you would know how many different combinations of shirts and bottoms you can do. Four more is folding and splitting. If you had a piece of paper, in this case they've got a circle, if you fold it in half, then you have two parts. You fold it in fourths, you have eight parts. You fold it in um, different combinations. If you fold it in thirds and six, then you'd be able to find out how many different sections you'd have for the paper. You have repeated addition, where you take one number and then add it and add it and add it and add it and add it. Repeated addition is probably the best way to think about the Chisholm Bob addition, which we'll do shortly. You have fractal, where each branch goes into a pattern of branching at the end of that. And each of the branches would go into the same pattern at the end. That's fractals. Uh, scale and stretching, that's another way to think about multiplying. If you have something that is four, inches across, but you need it to be um, increased two and a half times, you'd end up with something 10 inches across, for instance. And you can think about the number line and skipping over equal amounts on the number line until you get to the end. You have symmetry, which can show you multiples of the same thing. You have skip counting, where little, usually the younger kids learn to skip count 
and it shows them um, they get used to the idea of numbers increasing in the same amount each time. You have time which increases by um, minutes um, of 60 minutes for each hour etc. You have money where you can increase by quarters or dimes or um, whatever and if you have multiples of each coin you can add those first and or multiply those first and then add each individual pile together. But let's go back to the idea of repeated addition. In Chismbop, primarily you are doing repeated addition. If your fingers know the combinations, you will be able to let your fingers do the additions while you count how many additions you are doing. And in that case, you'll be able to get your answer quickly. So let's practice a few of those. Okay, let's do some of these multiplications with finger math. What you do is you let your fingers do the patterns that they've learned and you just count how many of them you're doing. To do, for instance, seven fives, you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fives. And I have 35. Let's try five sevens. So let's clear that and go one, seven, two, sevens, three, sevens, four, sevens, five sevens. Still have 35, which is good because you're supposed to have the same answer for five times seven and seven times five. Commutative property. Clear. Let's try uh, six nines. One nine, two nines, three nines, four nines, five nines, six nines, fifty-four. Now let's try nine sixes. So clear that up. One six, two six, three sixes, four sixes, five sixes, six sixes. <coughs> Sorry, seven sixes, eight sixes, and nine sixes. Fifty-four again. So six times nine and nine times six are getting me the same answer, fifty-four. So that's a good thing. Clear. We could do elevens. One eleven, two elevens, three elevens, four elevens. Forty-four. Let's do eleven fours. Clear. Four, two fours, three fours, four fours, five fours, six fours, seven fours, eight fours, nine fours, ten fours, and eleven fours. Forty-four. Clear. Let's do a few more. Let's do uh, three times thirteen. One thirteen, two thirteens, and three thirteens. Thirty-nine. Let's do three thirteen times. So we'll clear that and we'll go three and two threes, three threes, four threes, five threes, six threes, seven threes, eight threes, and nine threes, and ten threes, and eleven threes, and twelve threes, and thirteen threes. 39 again. So let's do just a couple more. Let's do 5 times 12 and 12 times 5. So we have one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them, five of them, six of them, seven of them, eight of them, nine of them, ten of them, eleven of them, twelve of them. That's 12 fives and that's 60. Let's do five twelves. One of them, two of them, three of them, four of them, and five of them. So we have 60 again. Clear. Let's do 8 times 23. Let's do 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, 4 8, 5 8, 6 8, 7 8, 8 8, nine eights, ten eights, 
11 eighths, 12 eighths, uh, 13 eighths, 14 eighths, 15 eighths, 16 eighths, 17 eighths, 18 eighths, 19 eighths, 20 eighths, 21 eighths, 22 eighths, and 23 eighths, 184. Now let's do 23 eight times. 23 once, 23 twice, 23 three times, 23 four times, 23 um, five times, 23 six times, 23 seven times, and 23 eight times, 184 both ways. Here are some examples of using finger math, chism bob, to multiply. Mostly, of course, the series of numbers will get you the multiplication facts real quickly because your hands learn those so much easier when you've done the practicing that you've been doing. But you can use it to get harder numbers, and the more you use it, the more your mind picks up on the idea, and you can pretty much start doing mental math with it. And I hope you enjoy uh, doing some multiplication practice. Just make up your own problems and just play around with it a bit.